Okay. So now let me get to more concrete question. So what if I asked, all right, so there's some energy here. So I ask you how much stored potential energy. And let me tell you the wrong answer that I would get most often if the question was just asked. And the wrong answer that um, a lot of people would say is this one, that stored energy, potential energy, is equal to amount of charge plus Q times the amount of voltage, V naught. I keep saying that's the wrong answer. Why is this wrong? Here's um, uh, one difficulty that you face here. When we talk about this Q test charge here, what we are imagining is that um, you have some distribution of charge that has already placed the, or, or that has already established voltage in the space. And in the space, you are placing a small additional charge Q to see how much that additional charge Q, how much energy that additional charge Q has. Right? Here, all of that is so kind of jumbled in. These charges minus Q and plus Q are the charges that are uh, establishing the voltage. Now, if I was saying that on top of this, I'm going to place another small charge, um, small charge dQ. If I'm placing on another small charge dQ here, then I would agree that the energy associated with this small charge, small amount of potential energy that's associated with this, that should be dQ times the voltage. Like this is the correct answer. So, um, so the, here's how I know this is the incorrect answer. Um, like uh, how you can know it's an incorrect answer if you're just looking at the formulas that are in the textbook. So um, you, starting from this expression, using the definition of capacitance, you can express this uh, energy in two different uh, forms. Let me write it out so that you know, I have something concrete to look at. Um, so Q times V0, I can turn one or the other into the other quantity using capacitance. Let me turn uh, voltage into charge. I mean, so V naught into Q. Then using that relationship, V is equal to Q over C. So this would be Q squared over C. Or um, you can also turn Q into V using the same expression. Q is equal to C times V. So you might say this is equal to C times V naught squared, right? You might say that's the energy stored on a capacitor, but when you look up the formulas in the textbook, these are not the energies stored in the capacitor. The formulas you would find are one half of these. So the question again, um, why one half? So conceptually, um, one of the ways to get at that one half is this. Uh, let me give it to you in two different ways. Um, one of the ways is by this consideration. The, you imagine placing, on, uh, placing a small amount of charge here. So this is what I want you to imagine. Imagine that these capacitors, this capacitor starts out uncharged. No charge on it anywhere. And you start putting charges on it little by little. Now, the first set of charges you put on here, the, you know, imagine they are all uncharged. So the very first pair of charges you put on here, positive and negative, did it take any amount of work, any energy to put on these two charges? No, right? Because before these charges, there was no voltage, no electric field, meaning the very first set of charges they got placed for free. The next set of charges, now it'll start to cost some energy. The next set of positive and negative charges, I'll need to put in some energy. But even then, um, to place these additional charges, I'm not paying it at the full price of uh, voltage V0. Because until this is fully charged, I don't reach that value of V0. I only reach that value of V0 when it's fully charged. 
So what you have to remember here is um, the small amount of energy that you have to pay, that this associates a small amount of charge you place, and what you have to remember is that voltage is a function of the amount of charge that's already on the plate. So this is a little bit sneaky, unless you were thinking about this explicitly, like it's very easy to forget this. Um, that's why I said, you know, the one without one half is the typical wrong answer I might get, because it's a subtle issue that's really easy to miss. So to get this correct answer, what you would do is to start out with the realization that this is the correct starting expression. And if we want to get the full amount of voltage change, I'm sorry, full amount of the potential energy change. If you want the full amount of potential energy change, then what you have to realize is that, well, um, this is a small amount, and it's going to be a function of the amount of charge. So I cannot simply do final voltage times the final charge. I have to actually do this integral. So I have to actually say, all right, I'm going to have an expression for small amount of potential energy change. I'm going to see how it changes as the charge goes from zero to the final amount of charge. Write that out here, you know. Um, dq, that's my integration variable, times voltage as a function of charge. Um, I guess I need to know that. Did I erase that all already? Oh, wait, wait, I know voltage as a function of charge. I can solve this for v. So, um, so, um, so, you know, voltage as a function of charge Q, and using the definition of capacitance, I can say this is equal to Q over C. And C is some capacitance constant. I can pull, out, pull that out of the integral. So as charge Q goes from zero to the final amount of charge. So it's an easy integral, but, you know, when you go through it, then we realize where this factor of one half comes from. Let me finish going through that. So set this equal to um, plug in Q over C. So I have an integral of Q dQ over C integrate from zero to Q. What is the antiderivative of this? Yeah, one half Q squared. So it's equal to one half uh, there's, well, 1 over 2C times Q evaluated from 0 to capital Q. Oh, sorry, Q squared. Evaluate from 0 to capital Q. So you get capital Q squared over 2C, which was one of the formulas here. So that's one way to look at it, that this factor of 1 half comes from the fact that you actually have to consider the fact that not all the charge Q was placed at this voltage. Some of the charges were placed at zero voltage. Some of them were placed at this maximum voltage. And when you kind of average it, then you get this factor of one half. Okay. Now, conceptually, um, there's another way to get this factor of one half. Um, it comes down to this one example that we don't do in, we didn't do, and I'm really not going to do it in full, but let me just do it as an illustration. Um, let's say we are trying to calculate the amount of potential energy that's involved in getting this charge separation. Uh, let me say, I put it this way. Uh, uh, let's see, positive charge here and negative charge here. Um, you know, sort of kind of like this, except that let's do it with, um, do it with the point charges so that you can analyze each interaction one at a time, right? So I think there's actually, is there a more question? Oh, there may not be. Um, but you know, if you're doing this question, then this is how you could do. You could, uh, you could count up each pair of interactions. So you can count up amount of energy that's involved in putting together um, these two pairs at this distance, right? And you can uh, this pair, and you can count the amount of energy. So let me call this PE1 and call this PE2. And are there any other pairs interacting here? Uh, 
there's this, right? Potential energy 3, this pair. Potential energy 4. Any other pairs? There's more, yeah. Potential energy uh, 5, and potential energy 6. All right, any other pairs? <laughs> now I'm done, right? So, you know, if I, I'm dealing with the point charges, this is how I would count up energy. So count all this up and add them all up. That would actually give you the potential energy. And um, th this is one way of doing it. Another way of doing it is this. Like if you have a charge here that you're, um, let me do it in different color. If you have, um, this is conceptually, this is the other way you do count up energy. If you have a charge here that you're considering, then you can calculate the electric potential due to these three other charges. Uh, take that electric potential, multiply it by this charge, that would give you the potential energy of this charge. Now, what that does, what the mathematical procedure does, is it counts this pair, counts this pair, and counts this pair. Right? Now, when you do that, you didn't count all the pairs, so you do it for the other charges also. You imagine doing the same thing for this charge. You calculate the electric potential due to these three other charges, multiply uh, this charge to that voltage, get some number. So let me call those, uh, call this PE1, uh, PA, potential energy B, and do it here, potential energy C, and potential energy D. Now, you know, hearing all the description, do you think those different ways of doing it, that it should be an equivalent to description? As in that, you know, intuitively this is what we think should happen. PE1 plus PE2 plus PE3 plus PE4 plus PE5, one more, plus potential energy 6. When you count it up, uh, potential energy by counting up all the pairs of interaction, that that should equal potential energy A plus potential energy B plus potential energy C plus potential energy D. Like, should that be true? Whether you count it up by pair by pair or count it by calculating voltage and then multiply charge, calculating voltage and multiply charge. Now, when you actually go through this calculation, the result you get, so you know, we are not going to actually go through it, but when you do it, this is the result you get. What you get on the right hand side here that's going to be twice of what we get on the left-hand side here. Can someone see why that might happen? Yeah, we are double counting. Um, so if, if, that's why I stopped my description after the first one. Let me continue the description, actually draw lines each time I'm counting the pair. So when I do the calculation for this one, I'm counting this line here, I'm counting this line here, and this line here. You realize that, uh, so these are now counted once, but this is now double counted. So if I did just the A and B, then I would have been in some kind of hopeless place. But something nice happens when I do it for every single charge. So let me do it for D. So I count up this pair here, count up this pair here, and count up this pair here. Right now, some, some are double counted, some are single counted. Let me soldier on, do it for C. So count up this pair here, this pair here, this pair here. Now do you see that every single pair is double counted? That's why you get this nice relationship that here, it's double the one that you would get from here. So here the correct answer is that um, this is the correct answer. This answer you get by counting up each pair, making, you know, making it very sure that you don't double count any one of them. This is the correct answer. Which means there's actually a second way to get the correct answer. You can just uh, take it, all of this and just uh, divide it by half or divide by two, multiply it by one half. That will also give you the correct answer. And that's another way of understanding this because uh, when you do charge times voltage, this is the continuous uh, limit version of what we did there. So when we do charge times voltage, 
what we are doing here is we are double counting the, uh, some of those pairs of interaction. But what we can do is, all right, so we know we are double counting, and we just are going to divide by two later. So, so you know, we are not going to do this a lot, but, um, uh, but in the couple examples that you can see, th that's a, the two different way of understanding it. One is imagine building up this charge from you know, zero to some finite value, do the integral, you get that. Another way to conceptually get it is take this as a given, uh, think of different ways to pair up the charges to calculate it, um, and when you do it this way, by calculating the voltage at a point and multiplying it by charge, when you do it for every one of the charges, realize that you are actually double counting some of the interact, well, you are double counting all the interactions, so you have to remember to divide by two to account for the double counting. 